In 1958, a landslide in Alaska sent 30 million cubic meters of rock crashing into the Lituya Bay. The sudden displacement of water created a wave over 1,700 feet high, quickly becoming the largest tsunami in recorded history. What's even scarier is that around the world exists a handful of locations scientists fear could suffer a similar fate, and in most cases, it's not a matter of if, but when. Join us as we take a look at five future mega tsunamis that some scientists believe are simply waiting to happen. The Canaries are a cluster of islands about 62 miles off the west coast of Morocco, Africa. But, fun fact, they're actually a Spanish territory and one of the outermost regions in the European Union. About 2.2 million people call the Canary Islands home, as does Cumbre Vieja, an active volcanic ridge on the island of La Palma. Cumbre Vieja has worried scientists dating back to 1949. A local geologist named Juan Bonelli Rubio watched three of Cumbre's vents erupt and recorded as many details as he could. Once it was safe, Rubio hiked to the summit and found a 1.6-mile fissure on the mountain's east side. The fissure caused the volcano's western flank to slip 6.6 .6 feet towards the Atlantic Ocean. Another eruption occurred in 1971, forcing geologists to hold their breath. Thankfully, the vulnerable western flank didn't move. But what are they so worried about? Well, if that western flank falls into the Atlantic Ocean, it could send a destructive mega-tsunami toward the other Canary Islands and the 2.2 million people that live there. There are 1.5 trillion metric tons of rock waiting to fall off Cumbre and into the ocean. We're talking about 120 cubic miles of mass displacing the water below. If you know anything about wave pools, you know they operate using displacement. A large mass, usually just a bunch of water, gets dropped on one end of the pool, sending a multi-foot wave to entertain eager swimmers on the other end. If the western flank fails, some believe it could generate a 3,300-foot wave hellbent on the Canary Islands. In fact, the tsunami would still be about 160 feet tall when it hit the Caribbean Islands and eastern North America eight hours later. The wave would claim tens of millions of lives between the Canaries, St. John's, Boston, New York, Baltimore, D.C., Miami, and Havana. Basically, any East Coast city would be underwater. Cumbre stayed quiet for another 50 years, until September of 2021, when another eruption recaptured everyone's attention. Experts believe it'd take several more explosions for such a catastrophe to occur, and whether or not it's even possible is still up for debate in the community. There's plenty of criticism around the original studies and numbers, and most experts agree no such collapse could occur in the next 10,000 years. Now we all know that the Hawaiian Islands are just a bunch of volcanoes waiting to pop. The largest island, aptly named Big Island, is made up of five volcanoes. Kohala, Mauna Kea, Hualalai, Kilauea, and Mauna Loa, with the latter being the largest. In fact, Mauna Loa is considered the largest active volcano on Earth, dwarfed only by Tamu Massif, a near 15,000-foot volcano at the bottom of the Pacific Ocean between Japan and Hawaii. So, other than being the largest active volcano on Earth, why does Mauna Loa have everyone arguing about mega-tsunamis? The fighting dates back to a controversial event that happened 110,000 years ago. After finding marine fossils way up in the mountains, somewhere nobody should ever find marine fossils, geologists hypothesized that a 1,600-foot mega-tsunami must have carried the sea creatures ashore. However, critics believe those fossils got trapped as the island slowly rose out of the ocean over hundreds of thousands of years. Pro-tsunami theorists don't believe those fossils could have started at a lower elevation. In fact, there's evidence of a massive submarine landslide from Mauna Loa dating back around the same time as their mega-tsunami. So, what would happen if another chunk of land fell into the ocean? 
Well, according to the Nat Geo documentary Ultimate Disaster Tsunami, a landslide at Mauna Loa could trigger a 98-foot tsunami that would take about 30 minutes to reach Honolulu. The wave would be big enough to level the city and travel 16 miles inland. Gary McMurtry, a geologist from the University of Hawaii, is a firm pro-tsunami believer. By his estimates, there is a 50% chance a mega-tsunami will occur in Hawaii in the next 10,000 years. What do you call a chunk of land the size of Manhattan that could possibly fall into the Pacific Ocean and cause a cataclysmic mega-tsunami? You call it the Helena Slump, located off the southern flank of Mount Kilauea in Hawaii. The Helena Slump is the most notable of several landslides surrounding the Hawaiian Islands. But don't let the word landslide scare you. It's actually a very natural process. These slow landslides are how volcanic material makes its way into the ocean to help broaden the island. But if the entire thing broke off, it would spell disaster for the western US, Canada, Mexico, and basically all of the Pacific Rim. The entire southern flank of Kilauea is slowly sliding into the sea, with some areas moving almost 4 inches every year. However, strong earthquakes make the slump move even faster. In 1975, a 7.2 magnitude quake caused the slump to slide towards the ocean by 11 feet. Before that, a 7.9 magnitude quake in 1868 shifted the slump and caused a 60-foot tsunami. In 2018, a Hawaiian news organization called Big Island Now published a viral article about what could happen if the Helena slump fell into the ocean. They claimed it could cause a mega tsunami traveling at 500 miles per hour and even said the United States Geological Survey was covering it up. Dr. Benjamin Jordan, a geology professor at BYU Hawaii, weighed in, comparing the story to a poorly written disaster movie. A collapse would affect 10% of the island's total volume if the slump failed. The massive landslide would generate a 9.0 magnitude earthquake and send a 1,000-foot wave across the Hawaiian Islands and towards North America. For now, all we can do is wait and hope that this is one disaster that we don't see in our lifetimes. The country of Norway is full of beautiful mountain ranges, bodies of water, and snow-capped peaks. But one of those mountains, Mount Uknes, near the Geirangir Fjord, might threaten life as they know it in Norway. In 1983, a man returned to his childhood farm near Mount Uknes and discovered something quite startling. The locals had simply called it that crack, but few knew how big it had gotten. What began as a narrow fracture in the mountainside was several meters wide and 500 meters long. The crack is officially called Uknes Remna, and it widens by about 4 centimeters each year. Since its rediscovery in 1983, Mount Uknes has become one of the most studied mountains in the world. In the worst-case scenario, a 60 million cubic meter piece of landmass could plummet into the fjord below causing a 300-foot mega-tsunami to crash into several Norwegian communities. The crack collapse was even depicted in a Norwegian disaster film called The Wave, which explored what might happen if a mega-tsunami ripped across the country. Oh, fun fact, The Wave was Norway's official submission at the 88th Academy Awards for Best Foreign Language Film. It wasn't nominated. Hopefully, scenes from the wave never come true, and we figure out how to fill the crack before it ever falls into the water. Harrison Lake is a 95-square-mile lake in the southern coast mountains of Canada. It's also the largest lake in the area and home to a potential mega-tsunami. Mount Breckenridge looms 7,800 feet over Harrison Lake, and a fracture in the side of the mountain keeps geologists on the edge of their seats. The fracture in question is a group of cracks caused by unstable rock and seismic activity. Heavy rainfall also plays a hand, all adding up to a possible catastrophe. Scientists fear submarine landslides falling into Harrison Lake and causing a mega-tsunami. The lake itself could actually amplify the wave's energy since it can't fizzle across the ocean. Now, Destruction-wise, a mega-tsunami would level any villages, towns, roads, and businesses near the water. 
The most at-risk location would be Harrison Hot Springs, a resort village on the south end of Harrison Lake. The communities around Harrison Lake have some precautions in place if a tsunami occurs. They've built defensive structures to stop flowing debris and have a system of warnings and sirens to spread the word. Of course, if a tsunami on Harrison Lake did happen, those nearby wouldn't have enough time to make it to higher ground. In 2019, an Ohio State researcher named Chun-Li Dai devoted herself to a NASA-funded project in Alaska. She was looking for new ways to automatically detect Arctic landslides and found the perfect site to test her latest invention. In short, the device used data and machine learning to catch and flag landslides. She set up shop in the mountains surrounding the Barry Arm Fjord in southern Alaska and got some astonishing results. The entire mountainside by the Barry Glacier was moving ever so slightly. If the mountain suddenly collapsed into the fjord, it could trigger a massive tsunami, amplified by the fjord's narrow shape. Now, the only comparable example was the 1958 landslide and mega tsunami in Lituya Bay, Alaska. A 7.8 magnitude earthquake triggered the event, dropping massive amounts of rock 2,000 feet into the water. It produced a 1,700-foot wave that obliterated millions of trees on the surrounding shore. According to Dai and her research, if the Barry Glacier collapsed, it would release 16 times more debris and 11 times more energy than the 1958 event. Some peers were initially skeptical, saying her machine was new and untested. But satellite images and mountains of other data proved Dai knew what she was talking about. In May of 2020, 14 scientists penned an open letter based on her research, warning of an Alaskan mega-tsunami by 2040. Now, while some of these theories have been proven to be more far-fetched and unlikely, others have not. Mega-tsunamis are a real thing and have happened countless times in our history. Will these sites be the locations of the next mega-disaster? All we can really do is wait and hope for the best. To see another video just like this one, be sure to click the link on screen now. With that, thank you all for watching, and be sure to tune in next time.